the music speed to wind up your waist and feel the scratch and so You gonna mug me? I might gotta mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the piece of marathon. Download Veely now. Hold it steady, boy, and stop screwing up your face. I'm about to impart to you knowledge that's been passed down through the ages, from century to century, from generation to generation, from father to son. I didn't know your father was a barber. He wasn't, Ricky. But the only thing that Desmond likes more than the sound of his own voice is the sound of his own voice. Rhetoric is obviously not your forte, my dear Matt. Eh? You know, he's blowing up these balloons. You're so full of hot air. If you tied one to your mouth, it will blow up by itself. <laughs> I don't understand how you're going to teach me to shave using a balloon. That's the way I learned to shave, and that's the way you're going to learn. I'm going to teach you everything I know. So, that should take about two minutes. <laughs> and it will take me less than two minutes to throw one ignorant, over-educated, middle-aged student out of my shop. Oh, Desmond, how you can be so rude to Matthew? Practice. <laughs> right. Now, Ricky, come here. This is a razor. I'm going to sharpen it, and then I'm going to teach you how to... Hey, Desmond, I see you're going through the old balloon routine. You should wise up, man. Use real-life models. Fat Larry does. If you think that man is so clever, why don't you be our real-life model and let Ricky practice on you? No, sir, not me. I would never forgive myself if I allow you to cut my throat before I finish my memoirs. <laughs> well, you go back to your lollipopping and keep your face out of my business. Catchy this morning, aren't we? And to think that my book portrays you as lovable, modest, charismatic, and even-tempered? <laughs> Who are you writing about, Popeye? Gandhi? <laughs> Me, of course. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll. He'll get to the Mr. Hyde bit on page two. Page two? Listen, knucklehead, I've already <laughs> filled two of these notebooks. One, three, let a word on each page. <laughs> Jealous because all you know is school book learning, whereas I have been exposed to the wicked and wonderful world out there. Yes, you, me, and Errol Flynn. <laughs> me, it takes real life experiences to keep the reader spellbound. Jazzy D, you remember that night we played in the bootlegger's arms in Swindon? Oh, yes, big, fat, beefy Scottish landlord. Big Mac, Big Mac, Big Mac, Horsey. <laughs> That's him. Well, I was going through some of our old photographs last night and I came across this one. Oh, Lord. I'd forgotten all about this. <laughs> well, I don't know how many rums you had in you before Macpherson persuaded you to try on one of his Scottish skills in true old style, but there you were prancing around like a jaybird and hot coals. <laughs> <laughs> the skirt was bouncing up and down and underneath, he was as naked as the day he was born. <laughs> Shut up, Popeye. Go on, Popeye. I've never heard this story before. You know, I didn't know you women could behave so badly, peeping up under the man's skirt. <laughs> Popeye, I think we're going to tear up this picture right no, now. No, 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 man. I'm thinking of using it on the cover of my book. You better not. Come on, Ricky. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be surprised if I got one of those big, fancy book prizes. I can just see it now. And this year's Evening Standard Book Prize goes to... Augustus Neapolitan Cleveland Grant! <laughs> if that ever happened, I would eat all my books and go out and get a job. Shirley, Shirley, I'm going to faint. I feel sick, sick, sick all over my body. Well, if you're that sick, take your body and get out of here. Desmond, behave. What's the matter, Beverly? My heart is so heavy, my chest can't cope with the burden. I'm dying. Well, the morgue is just up the road. I'm a Christian woman, and I don't like to badmouth the Lord. But on the day he created man, he was very misguided. <laughs> and he's nothing but vermin. Surely, I have to talk to you, but not in front of these. These things. This is a barbershop. What do you expect to find here, battery ends? Surely you better take she upstairs. If I attempt to shave anybody right now, I definitely draw blood. <laughs> Come back here. Why do you treat her like that? Boy, there's things wrong here that you have to learn. Yes, Ricky, you see, Beverly and Desmond are like cat and dog. What do you mean? And dogs don't really want to catch cats when they chase them. It's just a game that they both like to play. <laughs> Look at these. Just look at these. Letters? Love letters. 
Love letters? <laughs> Someone send these to you? You suggesting I'm a loose woman getting love letters from <laughs> me? I found them! Where? Well, you might ask. I was just putting back cut butts going out shoes back in the shoe box. I like to polish them regular, you know. And there they were. Well, what are they doing there? Hiding, hidden from me by him by cut. I can't even bring myself to mention his name. <laughs> you think Cuthbert wrote these? This is definitely his handwriting. Stop turning them around in your hand and read one. <laughs> My little flower. <laughs> I am longing to be with you so that I can tell you how much I love you. <laughs> I want to be with you forever. Oh. You hear that? He never wanted me. All the time, it was she. But who, who is she? I don't know. There's no name. Read. Read some more. <laughs> Light of my life. Oh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, read. Read, I say. <laughs> Look at the paper. Some of these sheets are really old. This letter writing business has been going on for years. But this one, this one, this could only have been written in the last year. This is my lavender scented paper my friend Jasmine gave me as a Christmas present. <laughs> or was it my Jasmine scented paper, my friend Lavender? <laughs> is taking things too far, right into his fancy woman on my fancy notepaper. <laughs> calm down, Beverly, calm down. Have you spoken to him about this? You mad? The thing cut me up so bad, the devil himself guide my hand. <laughs> I cut up his shoes. <laughs> I cut up his slippers. <laughs> then I cut up all his socks. <laughs> but I'm calm now. I couldn't be calmer. So what are you going to do now? Oh, I don't know what to do. Don't worry, Beverly. We'll get something sorted out. Listen, I don't need your pity. <laughs> I might as well just kill myself. <laughs> Still, no man. How many more are you gonna do before I can have a go? Last time, then it's your turn. Now remember, Ricky, one straight, smooth, downward stroke. At... I know I'm gonna regret asking this, but what's up with fainting, Fanny? <laughs> <laughs> Beverly's in a spot of bother. I thought you were gonna tell me something new. Well, this is different. She and Cuthbert have had a falling out. Well, send her to the marriage guidance bureau. Well, she needs a place to stay, so I'm asking her if she can stay here. <laughs> Stay what? Well, um, she's left Cosbert. Left him where? <laughs> she's been married to that man for the whole of her life. Well, I've been married to you for the whole of my life, but I'd leave you if you did to me what he's done to her. What's he done? He's been two time in her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. The evidence is upstairs on the kitchen table. Well, I don't care what he's done, she's not staying here. Oh, it'll only be for a day or two. Two days? Not even two minutes, not even two seconds. But we are her only friend. She needs us. What nonsense you've been saying to that woman? You've been encouraging to leave her husband? Who's going to get his red mullet from out to the market? What will ever happen with Cuthbert and Beverly is none of your business. And now, I'm saying to you... just a minute. It's all right, Shirley. I couldn't help overhearing what was going on down here. I'll be on my way. Take your hand off that case, Beverly. You're staying right here. Oh, no, she's not. Oh, yes, she is. Beverly is staying here. I'll just go and curl up in a doorway Where do you two think you're going? I've got to get off to work. And I've just realized I have to return these library books straight away. Sit down. How can you desert a friend when he's in need of moral support? What would you know about moral support? You expect it from your friends, but you don't know the first thing about giving it. Well, let me tell you something. I only ask you if Beverly could stay here out of courtesy. But if you choose to be an arrogant, puffed-up excuse for a human being, it's tell her, tell her, she's staying here. All right, dear. Sure. 
Shirley. I wouldn't stay here, no, if he begged me. I can hear a doorway calling me. It would be well advised to return home, Beverly. You've left Cuthbert on his own. And there's an old African saying. <laughs> when the crocodile leaves the river, the frogs hop in to swim. <laughs> Think about it. Wait until everybody's seated and we've said grace. Where's your manners? Ask her where the key to my room is. It's only the bed that's on loan, not the whole room. <laughs> Ricky, when I was the youngest member of this household, I had to put up with all kinds of rubbish. Anytime Auntie Seuss or anyone came to visit, my room was taken over. I slept on that settee so much, I feel like an Auntie Macassa, man. What's that? <laughs> Chair back cover, man. <laughs> you can get me things. That door is staying locked as long as I'm a guest here. <clears throat> A guest? And look how you bit me rude. <laughs> look, I'm old enough to know you should forgive and forget. Oh, well, come on, how can you neglect someone who loves you? What do you know about love? Plenty. The more you give out, the more you get back. That's what I used to believe. It's still true. What do you lot up to? Junior here is giving me advice. But someone's got to talk some sense into you. Uh, don't start again. <laughs> cook all this food for Beverly. I told you yesterday we only have a light breakfast. I know, but I like cooking. It takes my mind off my troubles. Well, go back home and cook for cut, but... <laughs> I'm not cooking another meal for that man as long as I live. I used to take all the bones out of his red mullet, you know. You think another woman would do that for him? Of course not. Well, that's why he needs you, Bev. Just think, he might choke to death. I hope he does. <laughs> I have a burial plot reserved for him back home, but I wouldn't put him in it now. He would desecrate the place. Oh, you know you don't mean any of that. I do, I do. Cross my heart and hope to die. I wish, I wish. <laughs> I think Dad should go around and talk to Cuthbert. What did I tell you? No, Shirley. Man to man, get to the bottom of this thing. I said no, Shirley. Oh, yes, Desmond, please. Cuthbert's always liked you. He thinks you're a fine, upstanding gentleman. You could find out what is what and who is who. Well, you could. Oh, help me, Desmond. <laughs> Go, Beverly. I don't see how I can help you. Don't you understand? I hate him. I hate him so much that I can feel the bile rising up to my mouth every time I think about him. But I love him too. I love him so much. I need to hate halfway. And they start to fight, pulling and tugging up in her heart. If you don't go, she'll be living with us here forever. Oh, my God. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Desmond, I don't know why I have to be a guinea pig for this boy. Because your face is so tough, you couldn't even cut it with a cutlass. <laughs> but you're getting rude in your old age. Sit down and relax the man. I have a bucket on the day to catch the blood. <laughs> Talking of which, how's the house guest today? Don't ask. I went to see Cuthbert last night, but he was out. Oh, making hair while the sun shines. So why didn't you phone him first? That is exactly what I told him to do. Phone him and say what? Uh, Cuthbert, this is your good friend, Desmond. Your wife thinks you're a conniving, two-timing womanizer and would like to know who you've been carrying on with for the past 30 years so she can kill her? <laughs> In France, that would be called a crime of passion. That's the trouble with this country. The people has no passion. <laughs> why do you think Cuthbert still had the letters? You mean why he didn't post them? Exactly. Yes, but if the woman is married, the letters could get into the wrong hands. So why didn't he just give them to her when they met up? Because she doesn't want to keep them, so she reads them and gives them back to him. Only a man who's used to clandestine affairs could think of such a plausible explanation. <laughs> you know, I bet I know who she is. Cuthbert goes to the library every day to read the racing form. I have seen him eyeing that woman that works there. The plump, pretty one, about 40, jiggles like a jelly when she walks. <laughs> you mean Mrs. Martin? Yes. But she's married to that fish-faced man from Martinique. <laughs> she's a born-again Christian. Since when you hear Christianity prevent people from profanity? Please, don't talk. <laughs> you know, last week I saw Mrs. Martin and Cuthbert talking, laughing and glad-eyeing each other. I didn't give it much thought at the time. Well, give this some thought. I saw him coming out of the betting shop with a skinny little woman. She was holding onto his arm for dear life, and they disappeared into the pub opposite. 
One plump, one skinny, my, he does love variety. <laughs> <laughs> I see him in the pub with her all the time. Her name is Patsy. Cutbert introduced her to me and said she's his betting partner. Betting partner or bedding partner? <laughs> oh, stop it. Y'all jump into conclusions. Ready to tar every woman with the same brush. Morning, folks. Oh, morning, morning officer. Uh, can we do you for a coffee, huh? Afraid not. We've uh, got a report of a missing person. Name's uh, Beverly McIntosh. Her husband thinks she might be here. Well, she is, officer, but why didn't he come and ask for her himself? Well, he seems very nervous and upset, so uh, I thought I'd just pop round with him. Part of our new community policing policy. Oh, where's he now? Outside in the car. I'd like a word with her. I'll get him to come in. I'll get her to come down. Do you think it's too soon to celebrate? <laughs> Cuthbert, come for you. Come for me? I'm not a parcel you can sign for and pick up. You too feisty. <laughs> Beverly, please, be reasonable. I'll be very reasonable. Put on that knife, Beverly. All right, I will. This is much better for the job I have in mind. Cutbutt? <laughs> Cutbutt? Where is he? Where you hiding him, Desmond? Oh, so he said a policewoman to protect himself. Well, stand aside. Just stand aside. You too young to know anything about man and woman business. So don't even think you can intimidate me. <laughs> you must be Beverly. Now calm down, madam. He's gone. Gone where? Who's gone? <laughs> Cuthbert. Where's he gone from? <laughs> he was outside in the officer's car. I thought you said he was here. No, he was out there coming in here. <laughs> you lose Cuthbert? You lose my husband? You don't know where he is? Now, let me explain, madam. You better find him. He's not a well man. You shouldn't go around losing people. I didn't <laughs> lose him. He went off under his own steam. If anything happened to him, I'm holding you personally responsible. Interpol will be hearing from me about this. Interpol? <laughs> Calling all international frontiers. Look out for a man who eats red mullet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He must be caught. The species is in danger. You'll be in danger in a minute. There's man. I know where him is. He's in that pub. Shut up! <laughs> Hurry up and find him. He gets palpitations when he's under stress. I'll have a look around, madam. Oh, hang on a minute, officer. I'll come with you. I think it's time me and Cotbert had a heart to heart. <laughs> Hello, Cotbert. There's man. Before you say anything about Beverly, I'm sorry. I know how she stay. No, no. Um, you're expecting company or can anybody sit here? <clears throat> you're spying on me. Why should I? You have something to hide? Hey, Arkaf. I ain't buying your friend one. Can't afford it after that lousy tip you gave me. Lost all me money. I'll go and drink with me friends over there. Oh. Patsy, I presume. Oh, you know her name. Well, you can't keep secrets from an Ambrose. I suppose Beverly's been bad moving me. Well, you haven't exactly come up smelling of roses. Tell me about the letters. You wouldn't believe me. Try me. Beverly's got it all wrong. I've been writing her those letters for over 30 years. You mean you've been carrying on with them? Um... No, 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 no. The only thing I've ever shared with Patsy is a bet. The letters are to Beverly. I've written her one every year on her birthday. The first year we were married, I rushed home from work to give them to her. Young, eager, excited. But she was vexed with me because she thought I'd forgotten what day it was. I put them in my pocket thinking I'll give them to her later, but the time was never right. The next year I wrote another one, and the next, I just kept on writing them. But I couldn't bring myself to give them to her in case... in case she laughed at me. You know where Beverly stay already? Yes, me know. <laughs> when, when she found out about the letters, why didn't you tell her the truth? I suppose for the same reason I never told her I don't really like Red Mullet. 
<laughs> you see, Beverly likes to... Dominate you. Yes. Hey, but I don't mind. It's love I love her. I love her now as much as I ever did. Tell her, Cuthbert. Be brave. That's what she wants to hear. You think so? Me know so. Well, why can't I just go upstairs and get on with my essay? Sean, you know why. Beverly and Cuthbert are up there. I don't believe this. Has he moved in too? <laughs> oh, don't be so ridiculous. They've been up there for ages. I told them exactly how to handle the situation. When me and my wife were having a really good fight, all the neighbors knew about it. Well, she would open the window to make sure they didn't miss anything. <laughs> my wife and I never fight. How can you fight with someone you never see? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to see or hear anything. I'm going to go straight to my room. Oh, leaving so soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Shirley, he told me everything. I didn't know Cuthbert could be so... so manful. There was a power in him I never see before. From now on, he's going to give me a letter every year for the next 30 years. You'd never know what it's like to have such beautiful words to cherish for the rest of your life. Oh, yes, I will. I have letters from Desmond that I will cherish for all of my life. To you, my little honey bunch. Oh, yes. All those on which you wrote the words, P.S. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, woman. Time to go home. <laughs> Want any red mullet for dinner? In fact, I never want to see another red mullet in the house again. From now on, I want good red meat. All right, dear. <laughs> Was that all right? Right. <laughs> To do. You see, Shirley, it takes a man of the world like me to tell a pussycat like Cuthbert how to deal with a woman like Beverly. Young man, you will find out that there's much more to learn in this barbershop than cutting hair. This is not just a barbershop. It's a confessional, a sanctuary in time of trouble, a refuge, and at the same time a place where men of steel meet to discuss the burning... <laughs> Cleveland. Cleveland Davis. Everybody, this is Cleveland. Cleveland Davis. Hello, Hello. Hello. Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland Davis. <laughs> How do you do, all? I recognize the accent. Well, you're better than most English people, because they usually think that we all sound the same and come from Jamaica. <laughs> no, no. That's not a Jamaican accent, that, Mr. Davis. I'm not that stupid. You're from Somerset, aren't you? <laughs> Uncle Bertie from Somerset, he made the most amazing scrumpy. Boy, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not from North Somerset, I'm a Bajan. <laughs> Where is that? Somewhere in Dorset. <laughs> the man from Barbados, that's why he sounds like that. Just like me, Desmond and Shirley, sound like we come from Guyana. Vince sounds like he comes from Jamaica. And Mr. Man of the Bakers, well, he sounds like he comes from the bush. <laughs> People must have commented on his accent before. Yeah, right. People who don't have an ounce of sense. <laughs> Excuse us for breathing. These Bajans are very, very touchy. Cleveland is an architect. He used to work for the council. He's going to turn my dream land into my dream home. So you're finally going to build on that land in Guyana? Shh, not so loud, Pope. It's supposed to be a secret from Shirley. You're going without Shirley? Of course I'm not going without Shirley. She thinks I'm bringing somebody in to redesign the shop. Oh, that's not a bad idea. So, Cleveland, <laughs> not a word to anybody, and that goes for all of you. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. You know, he's been talking about building his retirement home on that plot of land ever since we were at school, and I used to walk home and caught him with Penny Thompson. All right, all right. 
Coppa, I think everybody get a picture. Now this, I don't quite get the picture. Did you and Penny? Yeah, don't worry, it's all here in my memoirs. Who <laughs> is Jackie Collins? This is my plot of land, handed down to me by my great granddaddy Ambrose. I hope it inspires you as much as it inspires me. Die, is it? <laughs> what do you mean, die, is it? <laughs> but what happened to the big plot of land that's supposed to run on for acres upon acres upon acres? This one stops after the first acres. <laughs> you see this picture was taken 30 years ago? Right, take some notes. I want it not too big, not too small, not too high, not too low, not too deep, not too shallow. What are you planning to make it from? Elastic? <laughs> as long as the check don't bounce. Stop thinking, Popeye. Now, I want the best timber money can buy. Not too dear, not too cheap, not too hard, not too soft, not... <laughs> Michael, Roger and Jenny have cancelled dinner, so we've got a window for Friday. Well, as long as the window's got good table manners, I don't mind. Michael, we're supposed to be sorting out our social diary. Well, you can pencil me in any time. Well, believe me, it's got to the pen stage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> even better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, people we don't owe but ought to. Um, top financial directors, that would be good for my career. City high flyers for my climb ever upwards. No, Gloria and Alex. What, my little sister and her boyfriend? They've been very good to us since our engagement. True. That painting of Alex's they gave us must be worth a few, Bob. <laughs> you're all heart. Anyway, that's decided. Give him a call. Oh, come on. Can't you do it? I mean, you're the one who's been saying you're getting on well with him recently. Please. Mm. All right. I know. Let's pretend I'm Deborah Carr in From Here to Eternity. Oh, what? Is this what adults do when they've grown out of playing doctors and nurses? Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm Deborah Carr and you're Bert Lancaster in that classic beach scene. Oh, this is childish, Glor. No, look, can't I be Wesley Snipes in New Jack City? <laughs> Would I be play-acting if you was Wesley Snipes? No. You're Burt Lancaster and we're on the beach and I've got my lovely cosy on and you've got your trunks pulled up to your belly button. <laughs> and the sand and the tide is washing over me, making me look absolutely stunning. No, 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 I've got it, I've got it. I want to be Mario Van Peebles in the posse. <laughs> Kiss me like you've never kissed me before. Don't worry, the other machine's on. What other machine? <laughs> One unkissed Deborah Carr, can I help you? Hello, Gloria. <laughs> Michael. Michael? Michael who? Michael Amber is your big brother. Who do you think it is? Right, keep your hair on. How was I supposed to know it was you? All you bankers sound the same. <laughs> yeah, um... How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, how are you? Fine. <laughs> Fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad I suppose you and Alex would like to come over for dinner on Friday, would you? Uh, we'd love to. <laughs> 8.30, OK? Fine. <laughs> Bye. That's my big brother. <laughs> you know, I always said he was all right, as long as we're not in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do all? How you just manage to come in the shop whenever Shirley's out? Call it architect's intuition. <laughs> and if you stand across the street where that car is always parked, you can sometimes see through the blinds. Bribe, <laughs> <laughs> <Why>, devious, eh? <laughs> uh, Mr. Davis, I, um, I took the liberty of browsing through our college library and I came across some rather interesting books on architecture. May I suggest, when you come to design in Desmond's home, that you refer to the 19th century architect, Monsieur Stevens, now, <laughs> if you're not uh, familiar with his work... Excuse me. <laughs> but are you paying for Mr. Ambrose's house? No. Then keep yourself quiet. <laughs> Monsieur Stevens, my T-square. <laughs> These radios are definitely very touchy. Uh, hey, are you sure to take one of those gaps in through the keyhole? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, surely. Uh, this is the architect I was telling you about, Cleveland. How do you do, ma'am? And before you say anything, I'm Beijing. <laughs> and I'm Shirley. <laughs> I'll wait to see what ideas you've had for the shop. Uh, 
No, you don't want to see it, sure. Why not? Oh, oh, they're really boring. Absolutely boring. Yeah. Yeah. Boringly boring. Yes, <laughs> they're architectural drawings, all squiggles and curves and circles. Yeah. Well, those are generally the best kind. No, no, it's all very technical, Mrs. Ambrose. Try me. Oh. That's funny. That looks like a veranda. A veranda? In, in Peckham? <laughs> 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 no, it's uh, um, uh, outside here, cutting area. <laughs> it was Desmond's idea. <laughs> yes, um, outside the hair cuts in the summer. Well, it's just a thought, just a thought. <laughs> as long as it remains just a thought. Look, what is this lift doing running up the side of the building? Yes, what is this lift doing? <laughs> it looks like it's carrying passengers. <laughs> All those years of working for the council. I'm a tower block man. Oh. <laughs> Monsieur Steve has never had these problems. The view from outside doesn't look like our shop. It looks more like one of those colonial stately houses we have back home. Mm -mm, get out of that one, Houdini. <laughs> Cleveland can explain, can't you, Cleveland? This is for Monsieur Stevens, ain't it? You little boy, I oh, tell you something. <laughs> These drawings are for Monsieur Stevens. That's right, Monsieur Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Another client of mine. <laughs> These are the wrong drawings. Oh, the wrong drawings, of course. <laughs> oh, silly you. Well, then you must come back and show us the right ones. Mm. Ah, so glad I caught you both. Mm, somebody building something. No. Yes. Don't listen to your father. We're having the shop redesigned. Re redesigning the, the shop, father. You do remember I own 50% of this business. Do you do 50% of the haircuts? That's not the point. Then shut up. Father, you can't just redesign the... Uh, uh, business meeting. <laughs> you know, we've always said that we'd go back home and build our dream house when I retire. Yes, but what's that got to do with well, you? I'm approaching retirement age, you stupid boy. And <laughs> Cleveland is drawing up the plans as a surprise to your mother. Ah, you do have a heart, father. Pity I didn't pass one on to you. <laughs> oh, well, put like that, redesigning the shop is an excellent idea. <laughs> anyway, look, I must love you and leave you. Uh, can't you just leave us? <laughs> ah, I almost forgot. Um, could you come over for dinner on Friday night? I'll have to check my diary. Not you. <laughs> We'd love to. Good. And the father, you can unveil the new plans after dinner. Yes. I'll try and have them ready. I recognise that accent. You're from Somerset, aren't you? <laughs> Tell me what you think of the latest Modigliani exhibition. Well, I found it, um... Well, how can I put it? Um, probably the same as you. How did you find it? Well, I thought his view of African ethnographical sculpture and how he conjures up silhouette, form and volume most exhilarating. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> I read all that opinionated garbage in the magazine. I was just dying to try it out on you. <laughs> Come on, man. I bet Alex that you was behind that phone call I, I got for Michael, it. so who's right? <laughs> well, let's just say that Michael does have his own mind, you know. Oh. Only once in a while, I have to change his batteries. Oh. <laughs> so, um, you see, son, what I intend doing is to send my main man, Cleveland, back to Guyana to see first and the land where I plan to build the house. So I want you to loan me a loan. I'll do it, Father. Not because it makes brilliant business sense, but because it's what you and Mother have always dreamt of. That's very magnanimous of you, sir. And besides, you can put your share of the business up as collateral should the venture collapse. Yes! <laughs> Since it looks like no one's going to say anything, I will. Mm, got a mother. Got a Gloria. <laughs> I, well, we have longed for this day. Now, there was a time when sitting down together like this and really enjoying ourselves would have been, well, an impossibility. Uh, Desmond arguing with Michael, Gloria arguing with Michael. Mm. Note the common denominator. <laughs> so, I just would like to drink a toast to the new Ambrose family. The new, the new Ambrose, Ambrose family. family. 
Well, it's been 30 odd years since we came to this country, and we've always said that as soon as the children can stand on their own two feet, we'll go back home. Now, Michael has been standing on my feet for years. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shirley, instead of redesigning the shop, I've been working on something special for you. This is the architect's impression of our dream house back home. Oh, I see. <laughs> You've decided that we're going to up and leave our shop using our money to build your dream home. Oh, uh, Shirley. Well, I hope you will be very happy, Desmond Ambrose, in your nice big house in Guyana. Because you know what? You go in there on your own. <laughs> Does anybody know why Desmond and Shirley are vexed with each other? Vince? Me? As long as them pay me a week time, <laughs> I don't care who vexed with who. You're never satisfied with a plane, yes or no, are you, Vince? Ricky, I haven't got a clue. I should have felt the atmosphere over breakfast. It was that bad I had to get me inhaler out. I didn't know you had asthma. I don't. Well, I think it is. it's got to be serious. I mean, one is used to Desmond's vexations, but Shirley, just look at her. When last you greasing? <laughs> yes, but look at him. Look, keep your head still, the man. Yes, man. You can't manhandle the man like that. You seriously feel that? I feel it. Well, come out, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> you come out, Bishop, as well. <laughs> oh. oh, you laughing at out of the shop. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Tell him to throw all our customers out. All the ones that put food in his belly for the last 30 years. It's not as if you'd be needing them in Guyana. Desmond, uh, Shirley, uh, how was dinner at Michael's last night? <laughs> Let me try. Desmond, did you show Shirley the plans for redesigning the shop? Redesigning the shop, my back foot. <laughs> oh, fine. If I ever mention the words build, dream, and home in the same breath, kick me. <laughs> We could market this as the new game show. We could call it Guess Why Them Vex, the show that put the horror back in arguments. How do you do all? <laughs> you better know that this is not how do you do time. Oh, <laughs> why is the man winking at me for? <laughs> Desmond, I brought over the new plans for redesigning the shop. Even something wrong with you, eh? <laughs> No, I said I brought over the plans for redesigning the Don't start shop. that stupidness again. She knows about the house back home. <laughs> yes, I've seen your latest drawings, Cleveland. And I think you did an excellent job. You, you do? do? <laughs> In fact, is that them there? Can I have a little peek? Just tell me what you think about a few minor alterations. No, which one would be our bedroom? That one over there, by the leaf. What? <laughs> that one there? That's a very small room. <laughs> <laughs> Could give us a little bit more space. <laughs> now, which is my kitchen? I say my because I can't see Desmond changing the habits of a lifetime and actually using it. Wait there. That is it right there. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> now it got air conditioning too. Well, I think I better just pack up and go. The only pack up and going you doing is with your suitcase with your airline tickets back to Guyana to examine my land. And while you're at it, you might as well put back the kitchen in the bedroom where they were. You're deaf. I ain't going anywhere. Who talking about you? With a house that size back in Guyana, sure you can find somebody to fill the holes you left in the kitchen and the bedroom. Heaviest in the afternoon. Perhaps even the odd rumble of thunder tomorrow. And more rain to come on. Ma 
father. You expecting burglars? No, yeah, it's not what it used to be. Is everything all right, Mother? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just that it's 10.30 uh, and you're miles away from Peckham. Ah, it's this thing between you and Father, isn't it? No. But since you ask, what right has he got making big decisions on my behalf? I think he just meant it as a nice surprise, Mother. No, no Michael. Flowers are a nice surprise. Putting the dinner on once in a blue moon is even nicer. Look, he was just preparing things for when you go back to Guyana. But that's just it. We're not ready to go back. What are we going to live off? Eh? Rum? <laughs> no, let me take that back. Desmond can live off rum. <laughs> Look, Mother. The two of you aren't getting any younger. You've got to start planning for the future. I think that's what Father was trying to do. Do you think he would at least sit down and talk it over with me? Yes, but, Mother, that's exactly what you're not doing. Talking it over with Father. You know, I don't understand women. No, me. What do you know about women? Well, I'm a man, aren't I? No, you're a boy. <laughs> Ricky, Dad's philosophy is that anyone living in this house shorter than he is, he treats like a boy. Shirley is shorter than Desmond. Yeah, and he don't treat her like a boy. No. But he treats her like a child. Look, boy. See? <laughs> when you start treating this place like a hotel, you can tell me how to run my life. Or run your wife. <laughs> I mean, what is this place, Cobbeter? When a man can't build his own dream home and his wife says you know how to live in it. Uh, the same thing happened to me, you know. I said to my wife, come, come with me to England. She said, OK, just give me time to pack. So what happened? You lose her in transit? <laughs> no. <laughs> I realized on the way to the airport that she had no intention of coming with me. Huh? She hadn't defrosted the deep freezer. <laughs> so I knew she was calling my bluff. <laughs> so what you're saying is surely we'll come after all, but this is just a test of our relationship. No, I was just telling a story about my wife. <laughs> well, that does not help me. The point is, shall I stay never to spend the rest of my days in my beloved land, or shall I go Never to set eyes on my beloved Shirley ever again. Easy, Dad. Hold it down. Leave him alone, man. It's a big decision. Probably his biggest yet. Oh, what? Second to should we keep Michael or have him adopted? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that the time? Is what the time? Oh, is that the time? Oh, oh is that the time? Oh, oh sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, forgot I lived there. <laughs> well, that's one way of clearing the place. Maybe you should use it at closing time. <laughs> uh, Shirley? Yes. Shirley? You know, I thought this would be like on TV. I say your name the same time you say my name. You say you go first, I say no, you go first. You say I'm sorry, and I say no, I'm sorry. And then we kiss and make up. But we're not that corny. Shirley, let's kiss and make up. Why not? We've certainly talked over our problems, haven't we? Look, I'm sorry I steamrolled the business with the house and everything, but it was just that, man, let's start afresh. That would be nice. We can both go upstairs. That'll be nice. I can make you a cup of cocoa. That'll be really nice. <laughs> and then we can both decide how we want to build our house back home. Well, you always have to talk about back home. This is home. You know what I mean? I do not want to go back to Guyana to live. There, I said it. We haven't been back now for 35 years. Thirty-five years! That's more than half my life spent over here. You mean I've been talking all these years about going back home and you had no intention of following me? <laughs> of course I did in the early days when the children were young so that our parents can hold their grandchildren. But by the time our parents died, it was all too late. We were settled. I couldn't tell you then. Well, you could tell me now. Back then, it was just a dream. 
It was a long way off. No. Uh, look, that's not good enough, Shirley Ambrose. For 30 odd years, you had me tuck my dream behind that mirror. Now you tell me you ain't coming back. We don't need to go back, Desmond. We should be going forward. Oh, man. Come with me. Let's go to the sun. Anything you want. We could have his and her matching hammocks. I can't. <laughs> I can't, Desmond. I, I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like not to see your children settle and watch your grandchildren grow. So this is what it comes to. <coughs> this is what you want? I'm not forcing you to tear up your drawings, you know. Good. Because I still got my dream. And as soon as I retire, I gone. Well, I hope it doesn't come to that. Because I'm staying right here. <laughs> From the long hot nights to the ocean breeze to the damp and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me, Rama. I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my sofa. Till the heart is over. Wind up your waist and feel Don't the scratch my sofa <sighs> Just eat it or leave it alone. Gloria? I hate him. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I hate him. Well, don't be so silly. Of course you don't hate him. Mm. So Alex is away a few days longer than you expected. He doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> I don't even like you at this moment. And don't look at me like you just lay an egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's grown-up time now, you know. You can't come round here to stay every time Alex works away from home. Well, I don't mind giving up my bed. I mean, it was your old room before I came to live here. Ricky, what have I told you about eating and reading at the table? <laughs> Don't you encourage Gloria? Me and Alex had big plans for this weekend. Well, why don't we do something this evening? Hmm? How about a girls' night out? There's a new Greek restaurant just opened. Oh, great. I love Muzaka. <laughs> Ricky, firstly, you're not a girl. And secondly, who asked you? That's sexist, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, nah, I'm okay. I'm gonna right. stay in, watch some TV, have a long bath. Yeah, know. watch your toenails grow. <laughs> you know, look at me. I'm glad Desmond's not here. It gives me a little time to myself. It's very important that you keep a little piece of yourself for you. I understand, Mum. Thanks. <laughs> I just want to see you. Oh, Gloria. <laughs> all right, all right. This Greek restaurant, then. Is it the one where you can dance on the table and smash all the plates? What do you think? I want to go. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, what about Dad? He's back this evening. Oh, don't worry yourself about him. After his weekend of being principal guest speaker at the West Indian Barbers Association annual conference, mm. all he'll want to do is... Is to... tell us how brilliant he was and then fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have gone with him. Mm. Missing Dad, are we? Love isn't just for the young, you know, Gloria. Oh. Uh... <laughs> oh, do you want that, Mum? <laughs> what does it look like? Listen, Desmond said while he's away, Matthew and I should make ourselves useful. So that's what we're doing. You should be grateful, Vince. As you're on your own, you're going to need all the help you can get. You know the best way to help me? No. Park your backside on that bench and don't move. <laughs> so stubborn, huh? Even when we were in the band, you couldn't tell him anything. He used to be drumming or busting up a beat while we were trying to play Calypso. You must learn to accept help, Vince, man, not do everything yourself. There's an old African saying. <laughs> the hen knows it is done, but leaves the announcement to the cockerel. Think about it. Why do you can't speak plain English? Well, let's sit down. What are you doing, boy? I'm just squaring my circle. What him say? 
That's what my mum used to say when she couldn't be bothered to explain something. Ricky, find something do before something do you. Ah, uh, Gloria, what you doing this morning? I have a man with a long curly perm coming in for your trim. Sorry, Vince. I've got an interview with the editor of the Peckham Gazette today. And before that, I've got some errands to run for Mum, starting with the post. Now, Sean can cut here. Yeah, but Sean ain't here. Lee's paying him to decorate some flat in Peckham Rye. I don't know Lee could paint and thing. Yeah, he can't. Her name is Janice. I've told him time and time again. Don't be so available. But will he listen? See ya. Ah, Gloria, good to see you so bright and early. Uh, don't be too long. We've all got to pull our waiters' fathers away. Don't you frighten yourself sometimes? Ah, uh, good morning, Vincent. Ricky, ready for work, are we? Good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you two doing here so early? I didn't realise you have to clock in to sit around and do nothing. Shouldn't you be at the bank? It's Saturday, and besides, duty calls. What's up? You can cut here? <laughs> I've been watching father all my life. How difficult can it be? Ah, oh, morning, Mackie. Ah, uh, morning, morning, sir. The usual Mackie? Uh, may I suggest, sir, try something slightly <laughs> different today? <laughs> you don't see that is my customer. Um, <clears throat> who's in charge? <laughs> Hello? Ah, uh, there's one. How's Bristol? What? You forget your speech for this afternoon? But I put it in your hand. Look, you check your bag. Now, which table, Desmond? The dining table? OK, hang on. I'll look for it. Wait a minute. We were standing right here. I put the envelope in your hand. You say, thank you, surely. And I say, it's a pleasure. <laughs> then you say, where my hat? And I said, it's on your head. Then you said, thank you, Shirley, girl. And you sat down right here to wait for the taxi. You definitely had the speech in your hand then. <sighs> Nothing. <laughs> what is wrong with me? You sat in your chair. Over here. See? Oh, he's still on the line. Desmond, I'm coming. <laughs> hey, no, no one. I was just talking to myself. No, sorry. All right, I'll just keep on looking for it. And when I find it, I'll fax it to you. All right? Bye bye, Desmond. Bye. <laughs> Oh, even while you're away, you still gave me trouble. <laughs> Careful. You're cutting it a bit too short. Do this side now to balance it out. Oh, look, you two. No, we're only trying to help. Well, I think I'm doing rather well, considering it's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a nice shape down the back. You know, I wasn't sure at first, but then I realised all you have to do is to simply follow the natural hairline down from the ear, which it takes the right angle, which then leads you to the correct shape. <laughs> well, it won't take us that long to paint again, Sean. Uh, you, you mean? I do have a life, you know. Yeah, so the decorating is going all right, then? No. Yeah. Look, we've just got to paint the sitting room again, that's all. Look, Lee, next time, just buy the paint from a legit paint shop. Dare I ask what colour you've painted the walls? Oh, and the ceiling. Yellow. Oh. Got it cheap off my mate Barry, who works for the council. Oh, he got me a whole range of colours. The council oh. painted my kitchen yellow. Yeah, but this is the stuff you paint yellow lines on the road with. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is bright. Yeah, well, I didn't know he'd been shifted to the roads and parks department, did I? Look, all we've got to do, right, is get the rest of the paint, see what colours we've got left, right, get back to work. Now, once we've got that done, it's me, you, and two cracking salts out on the raz tonight. Ah. Um, Lee, does my father know about this little storeroom of yours? Well, I should hope so. He's charged me two fifty a day. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last time I'm helping you out, man, even if you are paying me for it. You need to rethink your strategy on how to get a woman, cos this ain't working. Look, it'll be all right. Just wait and see. I wish Barry had labelled these paint cans. All right, here it goes in. Oh, yellow. <laughs> yellow. Size it going, Vince. Don't talk to me, man. You don't see a cut in here. <laughs> Ignorance is truly frightening. He's such a big man. <laughs> yellow. Tansies, everybody. 
Smart boy. The term is 11, sis. But it's only 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, red. Oh, well, wicked. What kind of red is it? it, it it's, it's red root red. Holy! Oh, Sean, Sean, no, wait, look. Hello, everybody. All right, Mandy. Is your mum and Sean? Uh, yeah, try upstairs. Thanks. Morning, everyone. Morning, Morning Mandy. Mandy. Oh, Desmond, I thought you were still... Michael? Ah, Mandy. You don't know anything about barbering. Oh, not you as well. <laughs> yes, you take advantage of the sale at Miles of Materials. Yes, Shirley told me about it. It's a wonderful shop. I have never seen so many designs. Authentic African prints and the colours. Authentic African prints in Beckham? Well, let me have a look. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> they like all these English designs in the Gambia. How much did you pay for this one? Well, it was a bargain. Five pounds fifty a yard. Last price? <laughs> Mandy, I didn't know you made clothes. I have this shirt. I got it in 1963. I've been looking for a dressmaker to make a copy. Do you work in Searsucker? No, I don't know. Ricky, are you going to help me with these bags or what? Don't speak to Ricky like that, Gloria. Oh, it's all right, Michael. Uh, Gloria's having a bit of a time. Emotionally off-centre. You know, crying and everything. Ricky? You must be ashamed of. <laughs> Alex is going to be away a bit longer than she thought, so... What's your skin made out of? Rhino-eyed? <laughs> Love is a terrible thing, I know. I've had my heart broken many times. Is this an introduction to another of your stories? Yes. Her name was Petunia Castello. She was a beautiful, intelligent, caring, sweet-smelling woman. <laughs> I can see why she left you. <laughs> she really knew how to move her body, but I could still teach her a step or two. She was a dancer. Anyway, she got a break to go off for dancing on one of these cruise ships. And so I told her she had to go and not give a second thought to me, who would be left all alone trying to find a reason to carry on living. Ah, oh, so you made it easy for her then, did you, pork pie? That's such a sad story, Pot Pie. You were so brave. Yes, but by then I discovered that she couldn't cook. Oh. <laughs> You've really cheered me up, thanks, Uncle Pot Pie. Gloria, <laughs> I want a word with you. Sure. Upstairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did give him a speech, didn't you? Yes. And you've looked everywhere. Yes. Then we can safely say it's lost. Honestly, nothing that was wrong with Dad. Why is he so. What? Irresponsible, quarrelsome, irritating, forgetful? Mm. Who knows? Gloria, those letters you posted for me that were on the table, you didn't post it with them by mistake, did you? I think I would have noticed, Mum. I put it inside one of my old college folders. You know, the one with all that red ribbony stuff on it, remember? Yeah. You mean this one? <laughs> the one you said you wouldn't be seen dead with? <laughs> then I put it in one of the plain envelopes. One of these. Yeah. yeah. And then he left it on the table. I think I might have posted it after all. You see, if your mind wasn't on that Alex boy, you would have seen that the envelope only had Desmond written on it. So it's all my fault, is it? Yes. Now, run back to the post box, wait for the postman to come and empty the box, then rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, all right? Just don't worry. What am I saying? I got to the post box just as the mailman was just about to leave with the mail. It's gone. What are you going to do? Oh, well. Can you remember any of it? No, but you must be able to remember something. Um, right. Come, Gloria. Write this down. All right. Now, how did he begin? Um, friends, barbers, countrymen. <laughs> Lend me your shares. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I never realised this barbering was so taxing. My hands are killing me. Listen, everybody. We got a crisis on our hands. Desmond forgot to take his speech. Gloria posted it by mistake with some letters. Now we can't remember a word of it. Oh. So oh. we need your help. Now, if we put our heads together, I'm sure we can come up with something even better than he had before. I mean, we're all talented, educated, humorous, generous oh, easy, people. Mom, don't blow it. <laughs> um, so, let's make Desmond's day, yeah? You'd be so grateful. All right, Shirley, give me some paper. How did he take the bad news? Well, he doesn't know it's lost yet. Oh, he's gonna kick off. We're forever bailing him out of some ridiculous situation he's got himself embroiling. I mean, do we have to do this, Mother? Yes, because he's your father. I'm your mother. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Here. <laughs> <laughs> got some pens if anyone wants. Oh, don't worry about me. As I'm a student, I always have a pen on my person. My father sent this over from Africa when I was about to take my very first exam. Oh, so it's an antique. <laughs> so, 
Desmond's speech is supposed to be about the barbershop in the old days, what it's like now, and how he imagines it might be in the future. You mean yesterday, today, and tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> Seeing as I was here in the beginning, I'll do yesterday. I think Michael ought to do tomorrow. Yes, I've got some pretty radical and revolutionary ideas I'd like to put to him, and this might be the best way to do it. It spares him having to tell you it's rubbish to your face. <laughs> right. I'll do today. I know I'm only part-time, but there's a few things I want to say about work condition, pay, holidays. Vince, you want to stay part-time or go no time? <laughs> well, I'm going to write about all the exciting things I've learned from Mr Ambrose. Can you make sweeping up sound exciting? <laughs> Just get right in. It's 12 o'clock and Desmond needs this speech by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, all right. How's this? <clears throat> Having my beautiful daughter Gloria around, even though she has her own career as a fabulous journalist, <laughs> is a true asset to the today feel of the barbershop. She adds a certain genesis. Gloria, color. just stop your stupidness and write the <laughs> Time is running out. But surely it won't get to Desmond by 2 o'clock. He's in Bristol. Poor boy, we've come a long way since the days of the carrier pigeon. <laughs> Michael, Pope Pie, we're gonna fax it to him, okay? So just write something, anything. Who's paying Desmond's hotel bill? Don't encourage him, anyone. Well, it must be a very expensive hotel if there's a fax in every room. No, the fax is probably at reception, Pope Pie. Unless, of course, he's in a suite, in which case the fax would be in his room. Now, I want to say that the purple marigold oh, there in Monte There will be nothing to fax to Desmond if we don't stop chatting and get right in. <coughs> I'm still waiting, you know. Oh, sorry, Seabird. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ambrose uses my bit about keeping him happy with cups of tea, sandwiches, keeping my room tidy, not playing my music too loud. Oh, look, Ricky, something for you to sweep up. <laughs> Here we are. So, at Mars and Material, I'm to ask for a little man called Douglas and ask him how the sale price can be higher than the retail price. Right. I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> well, um, thank you for all your hard work. No, it was a pleasure, Shirley. I really enjoyed myself. <laughs> Well, that you that wrote about the barbershop being an oasis in the midst of Peckham, rich with memories of times gone no. by. That was me. <laughs> What's wrong with it? <laughs> nothing, nothing. He won't use that. Well, it is better than suggesting that Desmond turn the shop in a driving hamburger joint with a little bit of your cutting on the side. I never wrote that. No, I did. And what I was talking about was the modern approach to life. I mean, we've got videos, cash point machines, fast food. Fast haircut? <laughs> Not in your case, Vince. No, <laughs> the idea is to be able to get a haircut and a meal as well, if you so choose. But we have that already. Cheers. <laughs> Has Desmond phoned to thank us yet? No, we don't know if he's received it yet. <laughs> well, I'm going to dedicate a whole chapter in my memoirs to today's writing event and how I saved Desmond's bacon once again. <laughs> well, Pa, haven't I told you that memoirs are fact, not fiction? <laughs> <laughs> what did Dad have to say? We haven't heard a word yet. No, he's probably busy memorising his speech for this afternoon. Uh, my father in 45 minutes. Well, the point is, I faxed Dad his speech, and while I was there, I faxed my Alex to tell him how much I missed him. I hope he's going to fax me back. Hmm. I wish they had invented faxes when I was young and caught him Frankie Pine in McClintock. <laughs> in my hometown, the nearest post office was 10 miles away, and I couldn't drive. And? Well, one day we had a row, so the next day, Frankie Pani came to visit me. <laughs> but I was out walking the ten miles to the post office to send her my letter of apology. <laughs> she never called again. Oh, oh. never mind, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, look. Ah, oh, Father. OK, all right. I want to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Hi, right, Desmond. Well? What? What? All right. Yes, Desmond, and um, goodbye and thank you. Oh. Do you know what the man said? No. He said it's dull. What? <laughs> yeah, he said some of it is all right, but it isn't funny enough. He wants jokes too. <laughs> he said we should think of some humorous events that happened in the shop to liven it up. And he's phoning back in 10 minutes. Oh, so he doesn't want to put us under any pressure then? <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes haven't gone yet, Desmond. Desmond, look, it's not ten minutes lapsed since lunch. Oh, Alex, I'm sorry, she can't come to the phone right now. Family crisis, bye. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, Dad, listen, everybody's written a funny story for you, but mine's the funniest, so I'll go first, right? You got a pen? 
Right. Do you remember that time when you suggested to mum that she does the manicures and the pedicures? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, let me finish. And the only people that turned out was these three council workmen digging up the road. And when they took off the boots, <laughs> you let her <it> dead. <laughs> Dad, no one's got a fear of other people's feet. So what's it called then? Photophobia? <laughs> give me the phone. What for? Dad said he wanted a funny story. You failed, so give me the phone. Listen, the only thing funny is your face. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and your suit. <laughs> anyway, Dad, listen, what? We should do it. Gloria, please get off the phone. Let me talk to Desmond. My story is definitely funny. <laughs> Desmond, you remember the time when that Jamaican brother came in the shop and he wanted an haircut? And when you started cutting his hair, he went mad because he said he wanted an haircut, not a haircut. <laughs> he has the hair in his hairs. <laughs> what? Well, Vince thinks it's funny. I'll soon show you something funny. <laughs> Let me tell you myself about the shampoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? what shampoo? You know the job lot of shampoo Desmond got from Lee. What happened again? Dandruff <laughs> epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> Three people tried to sue Desmond. <laughs> That's not funny, Matthew. I, I couldn't sleep for nearly a week worried sick about where we were going to get all this money from. <laughs> there was that time oh, when we all just tell me when he's finished. Right, right, well, right, right, right. humor is <laughs> You see, in the Gambia, we okay. were all... Desmond, you're still there? Boy, you hear the noise in the shop? <laughs> Everyone is... What? What do you say? Desmond? Oh. What happened? Ran out of money. Oh, God. Well, I know the number. We'll call him back. He said something about a taxi and the time. 25 to 2. He had to leave to get to the hall. It's quite a drive. Well, we tried. But did we try hard enough? Well, we went to buy some more paint to cover up the yellow, right? Then I remembered I had a tin of Sunset Tangerine in the back of the motor. So then we said... <coughs> OK, I suggested that we should rag-roll the walls and it really looked nice. So he made me tear up the dust sheet that was covering the sofa, dip it in the paint and roll it on the walls. Yeah, well, we was doing all right until some paint went in Sean's eye. He dropped the rag, I dashed to save it, accidentally pushed Sean, who rolled across the wet walls and onto the sofa. <laughs> I don't think Janice wants to see me again. Mum, it was so shaming. Yeah, and knackering. Well, I'm so exhausted. I never knew that using one's creative juices could be so draining. Hey, once Desmond gets back here and thing, then we can eat a share. Yes, Pope, you've earned it. Well, I'd rustle something up, but I think I'm suffering from writer's elbow. Small boy, the phrase is writer's cramp. <laughs> uh, I should know. <laughs> Would you like to stay for dinner, Michael? Oh, I'd love to, Mother, but uh, Mandy's prepared a little something. Oh. It's a special occasion. For what? Well, it's. 19 weeks since our engagement. Oh, and I forgot to send you a card. <laughs> <laughs> love, love, wonderful. Mm. <laughs> no, I've just collected my effects from Alex. Ah. Ah. No, where is Desmond? He should be here by now. <coughs> Maybe he stopped up to celebrate with some friends. Or mm. drown his sorrows. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it went well, Mr Grant. You gave him some good stuff. If he performed it well enough. Oh, Desmond's a great performer. Yeah, man. Remember how we used to do all the chatting to the audience whenever we played a gig? Oh, how could I forget? Yeah, the music <laughs> reviews used to talk about Desmond's rapport with the audience. Yes, but what did they say about the music? I don't remember all the details. <laughs> Any more tea, Shirley? I found well, a couple of father's beers. You interested? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't like fizzy drinks, anyway. Hello? <laughs> uh, Desmond, where are you? Are you all right? What? Did you? Good. Lovely. <laughs> what? When? Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Bye. What's he done now? Oh, nothing. He said the speech was a huge success. <laughs> In fact, it was so successful, they've asked him to stay over tonight and give the wrap-up speech for the conference tomorrow. Uh -huh. what? what? Yes. The title is The Future of Small Businesses and could we fax it to him by first thing in the morning? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. oh, wait. One more thing. He said, and make it funny. <laughs>
watching cricket with dad <laughs> i am desperate sean's away and everybody else is working except for matthew who thinks cricket is nothing more than glorified rounders and a waste of a good lawn well he's right in it i'm fetching and carrying for dad all day it'll be gloria lager and fix me a hard or bully beef sandwich all the trimmings <laughs> i'd rather be fluff me belly button why don't we just let him watch the telly in the shop no, no. okay let's not no. <laughs> the shop will be packed up with men and I lose all my customers. Women feel very exposed at the hairdressers, you know. Especially that delicate period between the sink and the blow dryer when anything could happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> women don't just wash and go. We wash and stay in our day, mate. <laughs> I don't see what all the fuss is about myself. I mean, it's not as if it's football, is it? Ricky, the last person to sit in Desmond's chair when the West Indies last came out looking like he'd gone ten rounds with the clippers. <laughs> get a bit carried away, doesn't he? He came in my room this morning and made me sign over all rights to the remote control. Exactly <laughs> when I lived there, I was the remote control. <laughs> What's the score, man? What's the score? Does that poor pie just breeze through it? Hardly a breeze. If you ran any faster, the Met Office would have issued a hurricane warning. <laughs> Stand back, my man. Your breath coming like a blowtart from me now. Sorry. Vince, psst. Relax your shoulders. Lean into it. Let your wrists do the work. Here's why you take this thing for. Come dancing. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I paid you to stay with him. Dad paid me more to go away. He don't need me. Uncle put pies with him. You know this girl, Gloria? Yeah. Something for four in a something quarter. Or something. <laughs> pleased. The Mexican waves hard work when he's only three of you. <laughs> Isn't it funny how sports allows repressed men to get in touch with the inner child? <laughs> Since when Desmond and Pork by need an excuse to behave like children? Yes. Chuck, Chuck, you hear, yeah, man? <laughs> it has to be another six. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> That's strange. I, I could have sworn it was here. You said that a mile back, Uncle. Why can't men ever admit when they're lost? Always got a front with this internal compass thing. We're here. Ah, yes, okay. Um, so if we go that way... Forget it. Excuse me, sir. Do you know if we can get to Desmond's barber shop from here? Desmond's? Yeah, of course. Why do you know him? You could say that. Oh. <laughs> you know, I've laughed when you see how close you are. <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll bung this gear in the boot and then I can give you a lift. I've got to go past that way to get to my stall anyway. <laughs> That's a great accent you have. Are you one of those cockneys? Oh, uh, no. That's too bad. I thought I'd found a black cockney. Wouldn't that have been something? But on a clear day, you can hear the sound of the bow bells from right here in Peckham, where I was born. I just love all this quaint mythology stuff. <laughs> I'm the real thing, girl. Oh, you tourists just see us real working class Londoners, not some birds in Common Garden giving it to Eliza Doolittle touch. We're actually here on some business. My name's Juanin Carone, and this is my uncle. The Reverend Marvin Jones III. <laughs> How many stand? <laughs> the first. Welcome, Prince. You're so cute. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Uh, in. <clears throat> Just uh, lift the lever on the oh, side. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, would your royal cockiness be willing to show me the real London? Yeah, I don't see why not. I'll tell you what, if you wait for me at Desmond's, I'll pick you up on the way back. We might not be there that long. I'll call you. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> All 
Bye, Sean. Bye, Sean. That was Sean. He sends his love. Ah, oh, it's good to see he hasn't inherited his father's repressed nature. Note how freely he uses the word love. No, what he actually said was, hold tight, Mum. Desmond's crew just big up your status. Seen? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, he and um, Spider are, and I quote, mashing up the jungle is massive all over Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle, are you sure this is it? Yep, it's been a while, but this place is etched on my memory. Can I help you? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever too far gone for us. Send forth the man, there is no hiding place. The eye of the Lord is all seeing. You don't have to tell me I'm a God fearing woman. Yeah, so am I. Sometimes. <laughs> I have traveled thousands of miles to find him. I have been cast out into the wilderness and will not find redemption until the doer of dark deeds is brought to justice. Can I fix your cuppa while you're waiting? <laughs> I didn't know that um, there was a James Brown convention in London. <laughs> Is one thing I know. I am not cutting all that here by myself. Bring him forth. That dark disciple must not be allowed to prosper. Uh, there's no one fitting that description here. Ha! The transgressor cometh. The perpetrator, I presume. The puppy who? <laughs> my name is Juanika Rone, attorney at law, and this is my uncle. The Reverend Marvin Jones III of the Pentecostal Rock of Ages Church of uh, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And what can I do for you, my man? <laughs> Hand over your worldly goods. What? What stupidness is this? <laughs> He's just kidding. Uh, I wish somebody would cheer the joke. <laughs> We're suing you, Desmond Ambrose, as the proprietor of Desmond's Barbershop. I don't believe this. How can I be sued by someone I've never seen before? Read this at your leisure. This isn't America. Suing people is not a national pastime here. <laughs> no, we've got Morris dancing. Shut up. <laughs> We're suing for deep mental trauma and psychological distress, culminating in marital breakdown and a complete loss of income resulting from a haircut in this shop. <laughs> and what have all them fancy words got to do with Desmond? Two years ago, while working as a missionary on a church exchange, I was lured into that chair with smooth words and falsehoods from the forked tongue of that man. Therein, he did proceed to alter my appearance with such vigor, such gusto, that I did leave that chair looking for all the world like a wrongdoer and philandra. <laughs> How come I never leave the chair looking like that? Okay. Desmond does the best he can with the letter he's got. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. All I do is cut air. Upon returning home, my wife took one look at my shorn head, complete with go fast the stripes, and assumed <laughs> church business was not the only thing I came to England for. Now, gentlemen, we all know how the female mind is driven by suspicion. Yeah. Yeah, ma. <laughs> the man suing you, he's not asking you to join a men's support group. But your hair must have grown back a long time. I can't help it if your wife don't appreciate style. <laughs> it's your fault I acquired that particular style in the first place. When my wife left, so did my mostly female flock. There was no way they were going to stand by a man accused of hanky-panky. <laughs> and <laughs> I lost my primetime TV show. Go downtown in prayer. And all because of you watching cricket and letting those clipper-happy hands loose on my head. Who you calling clipper-happy? <laughs> You'll be the rapping reverend. Yo. You came in here two summers ago when the credit was on. Are you the one that wanted to cast your net among the youth of Peckham? That's the one. As I recall it, you came in here and begged me to help you update your image. <laughs> no hero caught in the world would update them Cuban eels. <laughs> you said you wanted to put in. Considering the absence of Tony that day, I thought I did a good job. You call this... A good job. <laughs> Look, Miss Ronin, there's no way we're gonna accept responsibility for your uncle's mental health or his marriage. You say it like it is, Shirley. 
I have stood by Desmond when he had some of the worst haircuts in creation. That's enough. In the 50s, he had a slick back you could skate on. In the 60s, a middle parting that Moses and all the children of Israel could pass through. And in the 70s, he had sideburns that used to frighten small children. But did you hear me filing for divorce? Them sideburns frightened me, and I was a grown man. <laughs> Fix, I'm sure everybody get the picture. I think I've seen your face somewhere before. That's original, Matthew. Yes, Ebony Magazine. To think I should meet such an esteemed figure as you in these shabby surroundings. <laughs> shabby ain't the word. <laughs> Listen, Reverend, I'm a very skilled barber of great repute. And I will take you to every court in this land to clear my name. Yeah, you're making a quite outrageous claim. I don't care what he says. This slanderer won't get a single penny from me. Uh, who said anything about pennies? I'd say a good settlement would be around about 500,000 US dollars. <laughs> excluding costs. Here you are. You'll feel better once you've got this down, yeah? I'll still be ruined. Oh, I don't think it'll come to that. They were just trying to scare us into a settlement. <laughs> well, them certainly scared us run into something. <laughs> Desmond talk a good fight, though. That slanderer will not be getting a penny from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thought he showed great courage in the face of such opposition. But quite frankly, Desmond, I don't think you stand a chance in hell. Why? You're meant to be his friends. Yes, and as his friend, I'm duty bound to tell him the truth. I'm assuming you haven't read last month's Ebony magazine? Top 100 African American lawyers featuring our friend Juanica Roney. She never loses a case. Well, it would take more than big hair and a push up bra to scare any of us. <laughs> I think that long haired, walking jewelry stand of a preacher can frighten me. We'll have our day in court. Could lose everything before we even get to say, Your Honor. <laughs> Shirley, I want my bed. <laughs> Gloria? Yes, Daddy. I want my money back. <laughs> what, they gone already? But I've only just dropped them off. Dropped who off? What's she say her name was, um, Danica or something? You? You brought them here? Yeah. But they're suing me, you stupid, stupid. <laughs> I thought that was your mate's days. Juanica is a lawyer, and the Reverend is suing Desmond for a dodgy haircut he had two years ago. Oh, well, if I'd have known now, I'd have taken them to Fat Larry's. <laughs> when you brought them here, you give them what they want. Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Desmond. It's not Lee's fault. Yeah. You can't blame the dustman because the rubbish stink. <laughs> Lee is under no legal obligation to pay for your blunders, Desmond. But there is a way he can make amends. Lee, do you plan to see the illustrious Ms. Ronnie again? Yeah, she's calling me late. <laughs> Splendid. You are left with only one option. You will have to nobble her. <laughs> Result! <laughs> this is where me and my fellow mates will hang out. The best place in London. Oh, it's so... <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah, and over there you got some balls, see? Some balls, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and over there, right there, it's the old man's river. <laughs> it's just a little smaller than your Mississippi, I think. Oh, I think it might just be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Down the hatch, girl. Cheers. <laughs> Has that suit been in your family long? <laughs> These buttons date right back to the first pearly dynasty of Peckham. All and nicked by old Mar Stanley. Oh, how quaint. It really is good of you to show me around like this. These days, everyone's got an ulterior motive. Oh, it makes you sick, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> so when do you fly back, then? In a couple of days. Uncle's guesting at an outdoor prayer fest tomorrow. Why? What did you have in mind? Nothing. Just thought we'd come to do Des over. Don't even go there, Lee, okay? We agreed the case was off limits. Okay, okay. Try not to think about Des and how much he loves that shot. Nice try. I hope that's not the only reason we're here. Because if it is, you're wasting your time. That's what you think. <laughs> 
I don't know why I bother to pay staff if I do all the donkey work myself. Oh, Desmond, stop complaining. Vince needs to practice and Ricky had to go to the dentist. Apparently that tooth kept him awake all night. Children today don't know they're born. <laughs> when we had a toothache, there were no fancy dentists for us. Yes, sir. Piece of string, slam on the door, and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> and we thought we were lucky. Yeah, man, and if there was no string, you just slam the door and run into it. <laughs> oh, it's been so quiet around here these last few days. Yes, that's because I left you down here with old snail fingers. The man could spend two hours over a man head and don't say a word. He is bleeding the warmth out of this establishment. Only a fool that has skin teeth on these wages. <laughs> uh. Hello, everybody. Oh, Father, glad to see you in better spirits. I can't keep a good barber down. Hmm. The books are ready. Oh, good. What do solicitors have to say? Well, it's very difficult to tell the way these things will go. I mean, Father may have been a tad negligent watching cricket while working, but the Reverend didn't make a complaint at the time or request follow-up hair care, which could stand in our favour. But the business could still be ruined. Oh, no, I don't think it's that drastic. All we've got to do is try and reason with the man. He must be finding it very difficult coming to terms with his wife leaving. Why have you always got to be so understanding? Somebody want to throw you over a cliff, you say, oh, don't put your back out. Will your milk of human kindness never run dry? No. I ordered extra when I married you. Speak <laughs> of the devil. Wrong side, my friend. I'm cheering for the home team. <laughs> if you want to sling mud, you sling it at my lawyer. That's what I'm paying for. Wait, I come in peace, brother. <laughs> Yesterday, children, I sat in my hotel room, alone and destitute, amen, <laughs> save for the presence of my lord. <laughs> I thought I'd better try to get used to these long, long, lonely nights. <laughs> and I didn't look to my lord for counsel. Now, I didn't have to look too far, see, because he was right there. And he called me. Softly at first, he said, Marvin, I said, what? <laughs> he said, Marvin! I said, what? Give the man a chance, Desmond. He may have changed his mind. Preach, Reverend, preach. He said, Marvin! Um, I think we're all quite clear on how this conversation started. <laughs> Pray continue. Uh, pardon the pun, but without me. The Lord said, Marvin! Go to this man! Take Satan from his hand! <laughs> and I said, get out of here, Lord. But you know how persuasive the good old Lord can be. <laughs> when I entered here, I heard somebody speak of me as a devil. It's just a figure of speech, Reverend. I know. <laughs> but the devil is among us. There's evil forces working here. Well, at least it keeps them off the streets. <laughs> My brother, I know you're afraid, which is why I've come to help you. Well, uh, at least you could um, cancel that stupid lawsuit. Are you nuts? Mm -mm, no, I'm gonna get paid with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm here to save your soul. Cleanse him, Lord. <laughs> Cleanse this tormentor. Tormentor. Disease with the soul. Use me. Make me a child. He can't help his weaknesses, Lord. No, he can't help himself. Amen. <laughs> Same again? Oh, no, please. Allow me. It's the least I can do. Oh. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Is this your definition of nobbling? Matt, how long have you been here? Well, I've been trailing you for most of the morning. I knew you wouldn't recognize me behind this airport paperback. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if she catches you, we're rumbled. Well, as a mastermind of this plan, it's up to me to see it properly executed. And though your stories of old London town moved me, we mustn't forget the real reason we are here, to get Desmond off the hook. Look, I've tried, but she won't even talk about it. Well, I think Barrister, not Barrow Boy. Oh, <laughs> she's coming. I knew you were putting me on. You fake. When? Oh, Dwanika, look, I can explain. It weren't my idea. When I asked.
asked the guy for some how'd you feels. He said he felt fine and asked me how I was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That cockney humour can be a killer, can't it? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, oh, don't worry about him. He's a bit doolally. <laughs> Here, dig in. I want to get a picture of you eating this stuff. <laughs> get on with yeah, it. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, look, look, I, I know you said you don't want to talk about it, right? But I think what your uncle's doing to Des is bang out of order. He's family, Lee. You do the same. But what if it weren't a haircut? I mean, maybe his marriage was in stock beforehand. Maybe. But the haircut was the last straw. At least that's what he told everyone. Oh, well, he ain't suffered in silence, then. He doesn't know how. Explain something to me, yeah? If I can. Now, I ain't no legal eagle, right? But I've watched my fair share of L.A. law. <laughs> now, if someone goes around, right, attacking the good reputation of someone else, could that not be construed as defamation of character? At the simplest <laughs> level, yes. OK, take your time on this, yeah? Who would have the stronger case? Someone, let's say a barber for argument's sake, yeah? Pillar of the community, professional children, wife, does a lot of work for charity and holds down a full-time job, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, who would you put your money on? This good, honest barber whose character has been defamed or, for argument's sake again, a funky reverend whose wife doesn't trust him and has been thrown out of church. Yes! <laughs> I said it was in the power of prayer. Well, I'm coming to you now. I'm praying. What's wrong with Reverend Motormouth now? Does one spirit peck him? Clap him, Lord! Make me an instrument, pack it. Good grief, is the Bunny Prince of Peckham. <laughs> Uncle, are you all right? We've got to talk. Yeah, I'm fine, kitten. I see you in court. Uh, maybe not. We'll talk on the way. Let's go. Sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> what you talking about, girl? Uh, Uncle. Bye, Lee. Bye. Oh, who gonna pay the hotel bill, Chano? I have seen you in law school today. <laughs> oh, no law since you are still in this. You mean you actually got her to drop it? That's marvellous. Yes, he was rather good under my expert tuition. <laughs> I told her straight. I said, hey, takes more than a barnet fair cut for your trouble and strife to leave you in the right old two and eight on the Jack Jones, I said. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't know what you said, but thank you for saying it, yeah. me old China. <laughs>